Hi, welcome back to our Road to Steam series, a series in which we'll be creating a game from scratch. Previously on our Hoost Dev Diaries, we finalized our 2D environment. In today's episode, we will implement our finished scenery into the game. Interested to follow the progress of our game? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all the latest development updates every week. Now that we've applied the final touches on our 2D environment, it's finally time to bring it into the project. But before getting our hands dirty, we need to pay a little visit to our camera setup. Even though our scenery is made up of 2D images, our ultimate goal is to implement our environment in a way that it seems to have 3D depth. Something resembling what you can find in Ori and the Blind Forest. A year ago, we created a particular camera system to meet this vision. This setup is made up of not one, but three cameras. Two of them are in perspective view, and the other one is in orthographic view. To understand how we'll implement our 2D environment, you need to become familiar with these two concepts. So, let's break them down together. The perspective view is the one that you know the most. This is how we perceive the world with our eyes. When observing through this point of view, close objects will appear bigger than those that are far in the distance. This might seem like an irrelevant detail, but in reality, it's at the center of the effect we want to create. The effect can be observed when our point of view starts moving around. When this happens, close objects appear to move faster than those that are far in the distance. This subtle phenomenon is called the parallax effect. It can only exist when there's a notion of depth in the way we perceive the world. And lucky for us, that's the main purpose of the perspective camera. But what happens if there's no depth? Well, that's where the orthographic view comes in. This point of view basically takes your 3D image and squashes it into a 2D one. It's a neat effect, but by using it, we also lose something important. The ability to differentiate which object is closer and which is farther. The consequence for this trade-off is that we no longer have a parallax effect when our point of view is moving around. That's why we created a triple camera setup for Hoos. A middle orthographic camera to squash our 3D models on a 2D plane, and two perspective cameras to render the parallax effect of our scenery. One in the front, and one in the back. This is an excellent system, but in the end, we need to throw it into the trash. The reason for this change is that it becomes time consuming for us to work this way. When we placed our previous environment, we continuously had to readjust the scaling and position of our panels to get the parallax effect we wanted. This became quite tedious after a while. So, to fix this issue, we'll need something simpler. A single orthographic camera. You may be wondering why we chose this type of camera when it can't produce a parallax effect by itself. You would be right to think so. But what we didn't tell you is that we still have one more trick up our sleeve. What we'll do is create the illusion of depth for our new point of view. To accomplish this, we'll just need to replicate the main characteristic of a parallax effect. The one where close objects seem to move faster than those that are far away. Currently, the way you can notice the parallax effect in Hoos is when our camera is in motion. As it changes position, you can see that some panels are moving at the same speed while others are moving much slower. This particular behavior is the one we will copy to create our illusion. By assigning a fraction of the camera's speed to each panels when it's moving, we can effectively replicate the parallax effect with an orthographic view. Now that we have our solution, the only thing left to do is set up our scenery. First, we use a reference image of our environment to help us place our panels the same way they were drawn in Krita. Then, we align them behind each other as if we were preparing a theater stage. When that's done, we make our background follow our camera so that it looks motionless during gameplay. Finally, we assign different speeds to our moving panels. Having a speed of 1 means that you follow the camera's movement perfectly like our background. If you have a speed of 0, you remain completely stationary like the ground panel on which the player stands. To have a negative speed is to move in the opposite direction of the camera like our foreground. The middle ground panels have speed values between 1 and 0. 
The lower your speed, the faster you'll appear to move when the camera changes position. With this, we have officially completed the implementation of our 2D environment. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll transform our scenery into an infinite environment. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next week for the new episode of our Road to Steam series.